to, to uh, speed up the discussion. We learn so much from now. Like the Indonesian Communist Party in its self-criticism, uh, we got from Mao uh, these uh, uh, propositions uh, that the party must lead with two weapons, armed struggle and, uh, and uh, uh, the United Front. And in armed struggle, there must be integration of uh, armed struggle with land reform and um, uh, and creating the mass base and together with organs, local organs of political power, no? So uh, I'm now telling you in brief what we learned from Mao, and uh, it, uh, I think uh, that should make you understand uh, uh, how we delivered the critical blows uh, to the series of Lava Brothers, uh, just by mentioning those we learned from Mao. Now, so now not let me to tell you now about the development of the uh, re-established Communist Party in uh, uh, nine, we, we know you, we did the first great rectification movement as early as 1966. So uh, at the same time we were preparing the drafts of the constitution and program of the People's Democratic Revolution. So we had two years of preparation uh, before the Congress of Reestablishment. And you know, uh, each side, uh, the Lava side had connections with the Soviet Union, no? Uh, they made, you know, we made the, uh, the declarations of separation from each other uh, simultaneously on May 1, 1967. And uh, they issued theirs uh, on the, in the information bulletin based in Czechoslovakia. We issued our uh, uh, declaration in Beijing, you know? It came out in the, in the Beijing Review. Um, uh, anyway, uh, we followed the teaching of Mao. You can start from small uh, to become big. Uh, you can start from weak and you move on to become uh, stronger than you were. And uh, mind you, uh, we were only 80 uh, party full members and uh, um, candidate members, 80, but uh, we were so, but then that would be already the majority of cadres during that time compared to the, uh, to the old cadres and the old party because there was no growth for uh, a long time. They did not have many cadres. Uh, so uh, that number uh, 80, and, but, uh, and we, we say proudly, in the case of the founding of the Communist Party, there are only 54 members. Uh, there are only 54 members represented by uh, those that met uh, in Shanghai. And then, of course, uh, we even had a better class composition of our, of our uh, uh, delegates. Uh, uh, more than 50% belong to the uh, to the working class and peasantry. In the case of the Chinese party, most of them were petty bourgeois. Huh? <laughs> so, uh, we, uh, we had our mass base in the urban areas. You will be surprised. We had a mass base of only 15,000. Uh, 10,000 youth, 5,000 uh, uh, unionists because the uh, out of a total of 20,000 unionists in three federations, we could get only uh, five. But we had a mass base who, uh, when we linked up with the good uh, members of the uh, old people's army, uh, we inherited from the old movement 80,000. 80,000. Uh, people in that particular area where we established the new people's army in 1969 no? and um, in uh, and you know uh, as soon as uh, there was the join up between proletarian cadres from the city and uh, the uh, veterans uh, of the old people's army who were good no? oh, yeah, by the way part of the rectification movement was criticizing and repudiating uh, what, what we call the Sumulong gangster clique. <coughs> uh, that's, uh, they usurped leadership over the remnants of the old people's army. 
they were gangsters because they made, uh, they, they concentrated on uh, earning from uh, air protection racket in the cities uh, attached to the U.S. military base. And it was just for show uh, that they, they were still involved in work among the peasants. But the good ones they assigned to the, uh, to the peasants, we got those. <coughs> But we did not get those, uh, you know, enjoying uh, 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 collection of money from the gambling joints, the prostitution dens, and from the, the businessmen on the garbage dump of the embassy. Anyway, as soon as uh, we we had that join up, we dispatched cadres to uh, Isabella, uh, northeast Luzon. Uh, we were in northwest. Um, and we were in central Luzon, that's east, oh, excuse me, west, west of central Luzon, rather. And then, uh, you know, in a short period of one year and a half, our nine rifles became, uh, became 200 rifles. And we did, we, we did so by combining arm struggle and, uh, and developing the mass base and doing land reform. And then Marcos uh, answered with 5,000. <coughs> 5,000 against 200. And they killed the known peasant leaders of the movement and uh, they would raid five to 10 villages any time of the day or any time of the night. No? But anyway, we had already a bigger mass base in the expansion area in this Isabella. Um, uh, that was 150,000, so it's more than double. Oh, it's, uh, it's a little less than double uh, the original mass base in, in, uh, in Tarlac. Anyway, I refer to these two starting areas because uh, the, the strategy and tactics employed there uh, especially the tactics, you know, you can, kill, you can get killed at the level of tactics, even minor tactics, if you don't know how to, if you don't know how to march, how to camp, and so on and so forth, and you don't know how to deal with uh, problems, huh? if, you, if you ambush right away the Philippine Constabulary or the army without a mass base, you can get killed, you, can, you, you don't develop. Uh, so you really have to be with the masses. Um, Anyway, uh, the map you have to do in the very first place, good social investigation, huh? uh, like many uh, of the academic friends, they do uh, research very well to get the, uh, to finish a dissertation, masteral, doctoral. <laughs> in, in, in the case of the revolutionaries, they must do uh, good rural research in order really to get, to get the support of the people. And you know, that's something learned from Mao social investigation. Now, I will move uh, fast forward. In my own time, as chairman of the Central Committee, I think because of the guidance of Paul's teachings, we developed, by the time I was arrested, the NPA, uh, the, the, the starting number of the party, 80, I said, we were already uh, more than 10,000. And then when it comes to mass base, we had already uh, 300,000. And in terms of uh, arms, we had 1,500. So uh, that, uh, a, seven, uh, a period of uh, 69 to <coughs> 77, a period of eight years, you have that. And it's quite difficult. No? Uh, to start is really difficult. Uh, I cannot tell you all the uh, sad experiences of failures uh, in the opening. Uh, for instance, we tried, I'll just give to you, to you two examples of uh, um, bad openings. Uh, we sent cables and then while I was away, they gave arms to the cables who were supposed to, to open to prepare the guerrilla zone. Uh, it's wrong to introduce arms right away without a mass base. And uh, another thing, uh, uh, there are so many errors. And then also, um, uh, in a way, uh, it's part, partly <coughs> successful, but 
you know, the attempt to import arms. It was only partly successful. It would even be better uh, to use the money to, uh, you know, to buy arms from the, from, <laughs> from whoever. Mm -hmm. uh, but the, the principal thing really is to get arms. Uh, your fighters would love their weapons best if they, uh, they were able to seize the arms at the risk of their lives. Yeah? Uh, that's how important. Uh, uh, really, it's a fact to be admitted that uh, the Philippines does, did not have a common border with China. Uh, those countries like uh, uh, Thailand, Laos, uh, they, uh, Vietnam, they had common borders. But even if you have common borders, uh, Malaysia had the, the advantage of you know you using a trail uh, via Thailand. Uh, through, uh, through Laos, Thailand, then you reach uh, Malaysia. But uh, connectedness on land does not really spell, uh, you know, development. You, you compare the Philippines, uh, this is boasting of course, <laughs> you compare Philippine struggle with the struggle of <laughs> Thailand. No? And, uh, um, uh, but you see, uh, all of, after my arrest, advances were made. And from 1977 onwards, but uh, even while there were visible advances, um, they were undermining errors. Uh, you see, uh, in the Philippines, what should have been developed on a wide scale is to create platoons all over the Philippines. But there were those who were ambitious, too ambitious, they uh, wanted companies and even battalions. Uh, and you know, this is uh, uh, not so communist kind of selfishness. For instance, in one island, they got ahead of other islands, and so, but they wanted battalions right away. So, but anyway, the, the, the comrades there were good. You know, they accepted the criticism not to be selfish. Uh, they, better, they better share their best haters and their weapons with other islands. So, but then there were those uh, hard, uh, hard-headed, stubborn ones. So I was not there already in the moment. I was in prison. No? So there were the left opportunists. Uh, uh, they, the books they used were no longer the uh, mouse uh, writings, uh, military writings. It was the US Army manual. <laughs> and they had the ambition of building, building large units with the, with the, uh, with the, uh, with the staff. No? Uh, so. Uh, the, there were two kinds of left opportunists. Uh, one was Trotskyite. Uh, the original uh, influence came from Ernest Mandel, but of course they could read directly from uh, uh, Trotsky. Uh, you know, Trotsky uh, uh, was in a leading role in the 1905 revolution and all power for the Soviets, what is slogan, and you know, uh, uh, as adapted by the uh, insurrectionists in the Philippines, uh, especially in Manila, uh, you don't need peasants. The important thing is that the workers from their command post uh, can uh, take power. Uh, they forget the country is semi-colonial, semi-feudal, <laughs> and then another kind of uh, left uh, opportunist in Mindanao. That did the most damage. Um, they said the NPA is merely a, uh, is merely a military force, that which has the dignity of the political military would be the urban uprising, because it involves people in spontaneous uprising. You know? So you know uh, they are they're quite imaginative. They attach the uh, dignity of political <coughs> military to spontaneous uprising. They are worship uh, spontaneous uprising, and, but, they use the, uh, but they use small units. But anyway, <coughs> uh, I would like to, to step back and uh, show you the subjectivism that gave rise to left opportunism. It also gave rise to, uh, to right opportunism. The subjectivism went this way. The Philippines is no longer semi-feudal, but uh, 
already by implication, they, they were shy about calling the Philippines industrial capitalist, but uh, by implication, the Philippines, according to, to the UN statistics, already 40% urban. So that's, in, that's entirely different from the China of yesterday, semi-colonial and semi-feudal. Um, you know, before I got arrested, we said, well, there may be a difference between the uh, composition of the population. China was 80% peasant and it was semi-feudal. Now, uh, give some concession to all those construction, public construction jobs, uh, projects being done by Maybe they are 75 no? percent, but uh, this time they jumped to 40 percent. And um, so, um, but anyway, a sharp repose to those people later on would be, why are you crediting the big comprador landlord, Mr. Marcos, who borrowed a lot of money uh, to import construction equipment and structural steel as the industrializer of the country. No, easy, easy to handle them uh, in debate. No, uh, but uh, <laughs> they were uh, the left opportunists were in key positions, especially at the regional level. And then there were also the right opportunists who uh, based themselves on this wrong. Uh, subjectivist proposition that the Philippines was no longer semi-feudal. Uh, <coughs> the, um, the right opportunists overemphasized the importance of the city and they, they were in United Front work and they said we must take out uh, the leadership of the uh, proletariat in order to attract more people. Let's do like uh, Andres Bonifacio of the old democratic revolution ever brought from. You know? And by the way, uh, among the left opportunists, um, uh, they also said that uh, party should not be should not be uh, play the vanguard role. It should be the United Front, as in Central America. So uh, they they tended to they wanted to mimic, uh, uh, you know the the. United Sandinistas uh, and the Farabundo uh, Marfi in, in the, well this um, uh, up to uh, the time of the fall of Marcos the um, the movement had risen to I need to say the armed strength of the new people's, people's army had risen to 5,600 <clears throat> so there was a real improvement, but then where the left opportunism uh, was applied. Um, in the concrete, they tried to form 15 companies by dissolving smaller units. By smaller units, I mean squads and platoons. And then, uh, you know, those small units are good for developing intimate relations with the masses. So they were dissolved in order to make uh, the companies. Uh, in, in the formation of the first three companies, uh, well, uh, they were very effective. Uh, but then when uh, it came to the fifth company and so on, uh, it, was, it became disastrous. Uh, there was a problem of giving supplies uh, to uh, the NPA units, or you know, they eat up the resources of the masses uh, by moving in large units, and then they were easy to spot. The informers uh, could easily spot the, the companies and report to the military. So, and then uh, instead of the NPA characteristically ambushing the enemy, it was the NPA being ambushed by the other side. And then the left opportunity said, Oh, it was not because of a wrong policy. Uh, it's not because of a wrong line. It's simply because we are being penetrated by, uh, by intelligence agents. So they let loose uh, an, an, an anti-informer hysteria. They panicked. Uh, so that was called the <coughs> Campanian Ahos. Now, um, I can only explain to you in brief, eh, before I get the warning from uh, the group. Eh? So there were errors. 
Uh, the uh, lab of the <coughs> error was already something spent. They tried to, uh, they, uh, in, it was 1987 when they uh, uh, engaged in what they called the nationally coordinated offensives, which was mostly uh, harassment operations, losing plenty of ammunition, no gains in, in, in uh, rifles. And then, and then, when, and then at the same time, that was supposed to be clearing the area where import, uh, weapons imports would be brought. I mean, they would create, uh, they would create, uh, what's this, uh, disturbances uh, on the eastern side of the, uh, oh, excuse me, on the western side of the Philippines, so that on the eastern side, imports can be made. But the imports never put that on the Then they went into, uh, they became disappointed. They became deputies and joined up with the rightists. The right opportunist, um, um, uh, uh, rose up in to prominence uh, after the fall of Marcos, and they were uh, jockeying for positions in the in the uh, Aquino government, and they were blaming uh, the leadership then uh, as uh, having failed to. Uh, to open the way for uh, effective links with the Aquino government. Well, um, the, in terms of arms, the damage was not so much except in Mindanao. But the damage in mass base was great. Uh, when the party leadership first examined uh, what, was, what was the loss in mass base, uh, in 1981, they thought it was only 15. By 1989, they found that it was 40%. By 1991, it was 61. So, uh, by 1991, uh, the leadership uh, decided it's time to make a rectification movement. You see, the normal thing to do in a communist party is to engage in criticism and subcriticism when it comes to errors in in matters that are uh, manageable within a core, within an organ, within a unit. But you know, if there are errors, uh, major errors that, you know, uh, involve several regions and uh, that uh, even threaten the life of the entire party, because these opportunists, left and right, were already uh, raising slogans which amount to calling for the liquidation of the party. Uh, the right opportunist uh, uh, suddenly had the initiative, uh, bigger initiative than the right opportunist. You know, it was a period of Cory Aquino winning, the propaganda uh, was Aquino could have included the left if the left was not too left, no? and then all the Communist Party did not go into a point cut of the 1986 elections, and then it was a time of Gorbachev. So. And then uh, Trotskyites from Australia <laughs> were trying to influence. Uh, they, uh, the, you know, uh, solidarity activists were sent out to Australia and they came back influenced by the Trotskyites. No? So that was the situation. So the rectification had, movement had to be done. And the, it, again, it would be done according to the teachings of Mao. Um, so, um, Marxism, Leninism, Mao Zedong thought had to be upheld again because the, the opportunists were using all sorts of ideas, eclectic. They would even say, let's have democracy um, uh, as we decide, as the majority decide. I will say, come on, uh, you can have all kinds of variations under ML uh, Mao Zedong thought, but if, if you say, Adherence of Marxism, Leninism, Mao Zedong thought is uh, is fundamentalism, <laughs> unacceptably fundamentalism. Why don't you try uh, entering the Catholic? Uh, uh, why don't you try uh, gaining membership in the, uh, the Catholic Church, and then you advocate atheism? I think the Catholic Church would perfectly have the democratic right to kick you out. <laughs> the same way in the Communist Party, the Communist Party is perfectly their, uh, their right 
the democratic right to kick out anyone who advocates something that is anti-Marxist, anti-Leninist. No? That's uh, 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 that should that uh, point should be considered no? uh, concerning democracy. So against eclecticism, there was a need, and the eclecticism would involve all sorts: liberalism, bourgeois liberalism, bourgeois populism, Trotskyism, Gorbachevism, and so on. And then um, another point that was stressed by the rectification movement was uh, um, reviving the anti-revisionist line because Gorbachev was spreading a lot of influence, especially among the intellectuals and those who work in the NGO. So they were very much influenced by that win, rightist win. And you know they actually were impressed by new thinking. That was the slogan of uh, uh, Gorbachev, um, and they captured a number of issues of the central publication. Uh, probably they they used uh, they used probably three to five issues to uh, uh, broadcast uh, uh, Gorbachev ideas. They they thought uh, that uh, with the new thinking of Gorbachev, it would lead. Uh, to stronger socialism, not to capitalism, but you know the, the you know the result. No? And then, um, of course, uh, there there are several points. Uh, the it had to be emphasized that the character of Cuban uh, uh, society was semi-colonial and semi-feudal. It's not true that it was no longer semi-feudal, and then. Uh, uh, the, uh, the corresponding action uh, towards such a, a kind of society would be uh, the People's Democratic Revolution. And, um, in, and then uh, uh, the main form of struggle is armed struggle and uh, a, uh, a particular way of carrying out people's war was intensive and extensive guerrilla warfare based on ever deepening and ever uh, widening mass base. And um, uh, another point, uh, organs of political power must be seriously uh, done. The, the organization of such organs of political power. And uh, the uh, revolutionary movement must develop, must maintain and develop a government opposed to the existing government. And the condition that the Philippines has uh, uh, involves uh, having dual political power must continue. So, and then uh, the many other points. Uh, uh, towards the end of uh, about ten points, proletarian internationalism should be should be stressed. And um, so, I take time in presenting the rectification because. What is, uh, what is the party and the revolutionary movement is, is due to the rectification movement. Without the rectification movement, the, the Communist Party would have been liquidated, no? Especially when the left opportunist and right opportunist uh, joined up against the central leadership of uh, the party. And um, now we go to the current figures. How strong is the Communist Party now? Uh, whereas it was only 30,000 before the rectification movement, it's now uh, at least 100,000. And um, in a plan to advance from strategic defensive to strategic statement, the plan is to make 100,000, 250,000 in three to four uh, in three to four years. And there is a uh, you know uh, uh, the comrades are smart, no? They put a qualifier. Otherwise, another five years would be necessary, no? <laughs> so they, they give themselves so effectively ten years to hope to ten, accomplish the job, no? Maybe they learn from the Japanese, eh? uh, say that you uh, need more time uh, to do something, but actually you will accomplish the job eh? within a short within a short period of time. Then uh, new people's army. Uh, I'm not supposed to. <laughs> mention that, otherwise I'll be disciplined. You know? I mean to say, uh, there will be complaint. But, but uh, you know, I have a way of 
indicating the real strength. Because the military keep on saying, oh, MPA is only 4,000. No? It is stagnating. It's going to die soon. Uh, if, if, if it's not going to be destroyed, Mahapagar said that, Arroyo said that, if it's not going to be destroyed soon, it will be reduced in, in consequentiality. I, I, I would say this. Uh, this is the way to try to make uh, a guess. There are supposed to be 110 guerrilla fronts. And it is not uh, a secret in the party newspapers that the uh, the total number of uh, fighters in an area divided properly is oversized uh, platoon to a full company. You can make occupation. <laughs> it's not too, and uh, you know, in this plan to advance the uh, strat, uh, strat, from the strategic defensive to the strategic statement, 110 guerrilla fronts should be increased to 180 in order to cover all the congressional districts of the of the other government. So that will be already overwhelming spread in the, the Philippines, although there would be an even development for sure. And then uh, ah, the, what the party has been pounding on for uh, in recent years is uh, the party and the mass organizations, the people's militia, and the, and the self-defense unit of the mass organization must take the work uh, so that the NPA units no longer have to be tied down, you know, by settling quarrels uh, among uh, couples. Uh, you know, the NPA uh, settles all, all sorts of problems. Uh, quarreling husband and wife, or <laughs> relatives, or uh, whatever. Uh, now, of course, they will still uh, in, engage themselves in, in solving such problems. They, they, have to do, they have to rotate themselves. So there is a rotation of the People's Army, of the same units in the People's Army, for combat, for military, political military training, uh, for uh, mass work, uh, for cultural work, and so on. So that, uh, but then, if, let us say, uh, the party, local branch, and the, the mass organizations do the work that were ordinarily uh, done, or <laughs> that, were, that were ordinarily uh, assigned to the NPA in many areas, uh, you know, historically, the NPA, in order to endear themselves to the masses, they tried to, to solve, to deal all, uh, with all kinds of problems. But you know, in order to make them effective fighters, you have to give them more time for combat and, uh, uh, and, and political military training. Now, what I'm saying uh, comes from Ang Bayan. Uh, anyone can do as I can do, no? <laughs> I go to the, I go to the uh, website of Philippine Revolution. So I hope that uh, makes my lecture legal, no? <laughs> and, uh, what I'm saying is sourced from the uh, the uh, revolutionary organization's website. <clears throat> so I've given you those figures. I should give, give you an idea of how strong is the uh, party, the NBA, how wide is their guerrilla fronts. Uh, I did not uh, say so much about the legal mass movement. You know, it's very much in the news. And I don't want to be said. Uh, as connecting those two. Huh? Uh, so I think uh, Bayan, which is the number one organization, also has its uh, website uh, for you to visit. Okay. <laughs>